Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. This week I plan on making some real progress on this crane. I feel like I just barely got started on it last week, but it was a holiday week, so that's okay. And swinging around over here, I have these two florals. Now I've mostly been working on this. I was gonna work on them at the same time, except that we're at the end of the year and it would be nice to sort of wrap up the year by finishing another mosaic rather than having two that are halfway done. So I may just sort of put this one on hold and work on the hibiscus all the way till it's finished. But we'll see how much time I actually have with all my family around. That's it. <music> In episode 30, I started these textured tiles and now they have dried out. So the next step is to sand them with a wet sandpaper and to smooth out the edges, then to paint them with an underglaze and then paint them with a clear regular glaze to give them some sheen. And the last step will be to load them in the kiln Wait for them to be fired, and when they come out, I'll show them to you guys. This will be what I use to make the sample piece for class. My students and I'm going to be making a sample mosaic from them. I'm not sure what it will be yet, but I want to show you my pieces. I had made some rolling pins with texture on them out of PVC pipe and here is what some of them look like. I made some leaves. This texture was from bubble wrap. Let's see. I made a moon. That was kind of for me. Here's these pieces. Again, made with rolling pin. I also made a number of just round dots. So I'll get them all out and then I'll show them. Here are my clay inclusions up close. For some of them, I use simple cookie cutters with the texture. Like I said, bubble wrap. This was texture from a shell. And these little rectangles I shaped with rocks. These I use Cheerios. You can see the bubble wrap on these. This was a leaf pattern that I made out of a roller and hot glue. There's some of the dots. And this is another cookie cutter. And then I had just some organic shapes that I made. I hand cut the leaves so they would be all a little bit different. And then these over here, I pressed individually with a tool, clay tool. Um, the petals, I wish I had made quite a bit more petals, but this sort of what I have to work with right there. I'm at my hairdressers and I'm about to get my hair done for the first time in a long time. But I wanna show you my hairdresser, her mom took my class and she and her mom have been making a bunch of mosaics. So I gotta show you what's in there. This salon is in this old house kind of charming.
have started working with this gold glass, I'd like to just tell a little bit about it. First of all, I wanted to show that there are definitely some different thicknesses. Because this was, I don't know, plates and bowls and whatnot, the rim is quite thin, whereas the middle of the glass is quite thick in comparison. I don't know if you can see the difference there. So that means that when I go to grout, when the, if these pieces are side by side, there's gonna be a height difference, and that is going to be a little bit tricky when I go to grout, but that's fine, I can handle that. The bumps also are gonna collect grout, and I'll have to use some extra, maybe a toothbrush or whatever to get it out of those grooves, so that's not a problem. But I want to show you that I was taking these pieces and actually scoring them in strips so and breaking it with breakers so that I could cut into squares or keystones to make the circle here, the ring. And when I did that, little pieces of sharp glass on the top would not necessarily break along the score line. And I actually already cut myself on that. So I have been hit, when that happens, when those extra pieces are sticking out, they can be very, very sharp. And so I am taking them to my grinder, which is behind me, and just grinding those down just so that I don't cut myself, so it's easier to work with, and so that when I go to grout, the grout will go down in between the pieces and I won't have some weird thing. And then last of all, the last thing about this glass is that I switched to uh, silicone glue because it is not perfectly flat. Some of the pieces are curved this way or that way slightly. And just to have better adhesion, I am using the silicone instead of weld bond because it's got a thicker consistency to it and it will fill those gaps. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.